Oh, I just turned OBS on, but I'm like craving water like a newborn sea turtle. So hold on. Oh, that slaps. Oh, if you enjoyed that little bit of ASMR, it is because I drink out of a bottle, just like Aubrey Graham, AKA Drake, AKA Champagne Poppy. Except I'm just drinking water, no champagne for me, not that rich. So instead of Champagne Poppy, I'm like the filtered water father figure. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I woke up thinking LMS commentary, and that is what we are going to do. We're in world uh, 580, which is the North American LMS world. Uh, there's no bots in this world, or not yet at least, you know, all humans so far. So uh, yeah, uh, because I'm doing live commentary, no edits, no redos. I can't think. Uh, let me just get all the excuses out of the way in case I die. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to see all my uhs, my stutters, my brain lag, all that stuff, because I'm going to be doing live commentary at the same time as I'm actually playing. So at some point, I'm either going to have to choose between thinking about the commentary or thinking about the game. So that'll probably be weird. Uh, let's jump into it. Um, while we wait for the game to start, we need a few more players. Uh, I got a lot more excuses. I just got a new keyboard. I got the Wooding 60E. I got some mouse. I can't finally adjust the DPI. And finally, it was arm day at the gym. So I am going to be more jittery than a caffeinated cricket, if you know what I mean. Uh, we're in a pure. So first thing I do, I always pray mage. I don't want to get frozen and we want to freeze them. And because he didn't freeze me yet, we're going to get under him just like Monica Lewinsky as fast as possible and start just racking up damage. We see him going for a bolt, which is really good for us. We are just going to keep trying to mix things up. And another thing we're going to try and avoid to do, we want to walk out two tiles at a time, so he can't just get us with a DDS out of nowhere. He got a good freeze, but he's not one-ticking anything, so we have plenty of time for reactions. And now that he ran away, what we want to do is, again, just freeze him over there. Because he's at a distance, it's harder for him to make a comeback. You really need the DDS to make, uh, you know, some lay down some groundwork. Get back into the fight. So I'm just going to uh, restore right here, and while I'm drinking, I'm going to brew. My freeze is over, hit him with a 2021. 20, Those are the perfect ages for DiCaprio. Uh, for the rest of the humans, I don't know, I guess it depends on your age. Uh, we got him frozen again, we're gonna walk under with the D-Sim. Oh, he bolted us, that means we get a free hit, and we're just gonna keep up the momentum. We're just looking at what he's doing over the top of his head, and we're gonna do the opposite. So we fake the crossbow, he hits us with a nice freeze. That was real quick, but he thinks he can hit us, and he can't. Unfortunately, he is just absolutely terrified, he is frozen in panic. When he walks to us, the first thing we're going to do is immediately try and get our prayer up, the, the pray melee. It's just natural. People tend to walk up to you and then just immediately try and DDS you. So it's something that you'll learn very quickly is just don't let him do that. So he's right here. Even though he's uh, praying melee, we went for that. There's just not a lot of defense and you do have a decent chance about just hitting a 20 or 30 spec no matter what. Again, I'm praying melee a lot because that is his win condition. I don't want to give him an opportunity and that's pretty much his only opportunity to win. Uh, just, you know what they say, like a dead bee can still sting, a dead snake can still venom you, a dead noob can still DDS you a 70. So you really just do not want to give them the opportunity to get back into the game, and again, their win condition is based upon what items they have. Why did he just blood barrage me? That was weird. Uh, anyways, he is looking more confused than a goat on AstroTurf, not really sure what he was doing there. But we're gonna get our first upgrade, we got a granite mall, not a bad upgrade, but this guy has a Kodai wand. Ooh! Does this guy have a Kodai in an ACB? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, two different guys, two different guys. I was going to say, we were going to be in some, for some trouble if that was the case. I think this guy's the guy with the Kodai, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop the Ranger's Tunic because it's absolute hot garbage, and we are going to focus on finding another fight. Two good-looking guys right here. Hello. <laughs> but uh, it looks like their fight just started. I feel like we just saw a guy walk past, so the fight is just beginning, and we don't want to wait for that fight to end. We want to try and find another fight, get another kill, and snowball so we can show up to the final fight with the most kills, the most loot, the best items. So we got a guy right here. He has a nice volley upgrade. We definitely want a staff upgrade. And we just staff bash him because we're absolutely failing at the game right now. He's going for a freeze, but he can't freeze me. He doesn't realize that I am naturally a cool guy and partially immune. So now that he's frozen, we're again going to lay down some momentum, just like a bad spotter at the gym, get under him as soon as possible. If you don't know, a spotter at the gym is supposed to be on top of you to, to prevent the weight from falling on top of you. You're waiting here. Welcome for explaining the joke. I will be doing that this entire time so everyone can stay along with us, right? So we are going to keep getting him. He's unfrozen. What we should be doing here is creating a lot of distance. And the reason for that is so that way, uh, when they freeze you, you want to create distance so that you can freeze them when they have to run up to you to get under you or DD you. 
So again, what we're doing, we're just looking at their overhead and trying to do the opposite. He says he sucks. I, I wish you were my girlfriend, but unfortunately there is no issue with that in the game. <sighs> unfortunately, Mod Ash always tells us this is not a dating simulator, but uh, we do our best. So the fight's probably gonna end soon. Hopefully, we'll see. Okay, the guy, unfortunately, he got melted just like, you know, Hershey's Barn and Texas Sun, but we get a huge upgrade in the Volatile Staff. And part of the reason is not only is it better than the Ancient Staff, but the other thing is that there's a spec that they need to worry about, but with that comes a spec bar. And the spec bar means that we can easily one take our DDS. I'm also gonna take the Light Ballista upgrade. I don't normally think it's a great option, but in this case, I have a pretty strong KO potential from range to melee with the G Maw. It's on pure, so everything's very accurate. And the other benefit to the Light Ballista is that it's just long range compared to the Rune Crossbow. So why not take it? Uh, the accuracy bonuses from the Unholy Book aren't as significant as uh, the defense bonuses from the Spirit Shield if you're playing on main. So yeah, a lot to jibber jabber about. So we found another noob right here. We are gonna try and hit him. Once again, we hit him, we freeze him, we get under him. If you don't know how to just not get frozen, just simply don't get frozen. It's really that simple. All you gotta do is tell the game, don't freeze me, please. And uh, once again, we're not doing any tricks. We're just looking at his prayer and trying to do the opposite. For whatever reason, he just staff spec'd, probably a massive blunder. But uh, with massive blunders comes massive opportunity for us. So what we're going to do here is now just double maul him from the... Oh, no. Oh, that was really good. Uh, I guess our maul just didn't hit. Very unfortunate for us, but we are going to keep the momentum up. He's trying to uh, de-sim us, so I'm going to get under him right now. And go out, walk out at an angle so he can't melee us. And then we hit him. We know he's sitting there in the scimitar. He's probably not the best player, unfortunately, looking like a newborn deer with those shaky legs. So we're just going to come up on the distance and start gaining some momentum on him. We don't mind trading like this because we have such a massive advantage. And again, whenever he eats, I'm going to probably melee. The reason for that is because if they just walk up with a claw of Gmall or something, they're able to unload a lot of damage on us. So that is their win condition, and that is what we're trying to avoid. Uh, not a bad fight. We get a lot of good upgrades, though. Necklace of Anguish. Oh, we're going to have a messed up inventory on this one. So we're going to take the robe top. We're going to take the robe... Uh, the Staff of the Dead is a fantastic upgrade because it replaces the Dragon Scimitar, which is very amazing. And we're going to pick up the uh, Infernal Cape first. The reason because it's a primary item in LMS. Uh, if you don't know what that means, that's fine. We'll talk about that later. Spiked Manacles, that's a fine upgrade. Not a great one, actually. It's actually pretty bad. But we're going to take it for now. We also got a third necklace. And this means that we now have each of the main Zenite necklaces, or including the Cold, I guess. And now, once again, there's four survivors left. So we're just going to try and find a fight. We're not really changing what we're doing. It's a very simple uh, and repeating process. I'm going to just arrange my inventory a little bit. So now I have like the melee section right here. Got the ballista. So whenever I open or equip the ballista, I can now take my items back like this. And we are going to try to hit this guy off. We get a freeze. He Does he get a freeze? Who knows? Who cares? Giant noob anyways. I already brewed. I don't know why I already brewed. That is probably a mistake. But we're going to hit him off pair again, which is not good for him at all. That is a terrible look. We are laying down a lot of momentum, hit him with a nice spell, and we're going to be on Frozen soon, and what the advantage is to this is we're just going to run up with a staff. Because we're on Frozen, is he going to run in with the claw? Yeah, we're going to run in with the staff and just keep on laying down the damage on him. We have a lot of melee upgrades, so as you can see, we are just hitting him way more than he expected. Now we have a ton of momentum. He's probably going to come back for the freeze. Oh no, he's going underneath. No, he's just running around, force gumping it. That's fine, it's a valid strategy. Not the best one, but it's one that he chose. So what I'm going to do, I, he has a Zuriel Staff and a Rune Crossbow, so his uh, stronger weapon is definitely the Zuriel Staff. So what I'm going to try and do is just really uh, focus on praying Mage as often as possible. I don't want to give him the opportunity to restore a lot of prayer with that. And as we've done before, we just walk under him as quickly as possible. We're going to get back into our full Mage gear, sort everything out. We have plenty of time because we have an advantage, so we can give him an, uh, a little bit of leniency as we're doing our own thing. He's running away. I really don't like this because he's a giant noob. But uh, unfortunately for him, we are just so good at the game. I have long range disabled because I'm on a pure, so I can't hit him long range. Otherwise, you would want to. Um, and this is actually a big advantage for him because he has the Zuriel Staff, which is significantly better. And I mismanaged my potions. I cannot restore. So he is actually at a massive advantage, but he is deciding to run and claw me from downtown. Uh, who knows if that's ever worked on anyone in the history of existence. But when he comes back, what our plan is, is we're going to hit him with the Staff of the Dead into the Double Maw. Like that. And we get him. He gets to sit down, take a seat. Thank you for your time. We did better. Blah, blah, blah. You know the drill. Sort out our inventory again. And then we are going to get right back into it.
Oh, uh, pick up the shark. Anything that we really want here is Zuriel Staff for sure. We're going to drop the volley actually for the Zuriel Staff. And I think that's all I'm going to take for right now. I just got to get out of this area before it decides to kill me. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the DDS in favor of the Elder Mole. And now the area is going to kill me. So let's try and run away. No, 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 I drank two range potions. Oh no, and I'm still taking damage. This is so bad. Why did I not path that way? Oh my God. So we're, we're down a whole brew. The other guy has a big advantage on us. I'm gonna drop the key just so I don't uh, have my inventory messed up. Gotta put that there too. And where is our friend? Is it a bot? Is it not? Who is it? Where are they? Let's see what we get from here. Code I want, not as good as Azuriel Staff. We're gonna keep that. A lot of people don't realize this. What happens with the Zuriel Staff is that uh, one of the benefits is that it increases the amount of health you heal when you do a Blood Barrage. But what people don't realize is that it actually applies before the overhead protection prayers are taken into account. So for instance, if they're praying uh, mage, it doesn't matter. You're still gonna heal the same amount if they are or aren't. And because of that, it allows some uh, insane uh, reversals. You're just healing so much. Okay, we're in the fight, so we're just going to keep focusing. He's guessing his prayers. I think we're a little bit too far for the crossbow. Is he on long range? We're just going to focus on what he's doing. Try and hit him off as much as we can. That's a huge hit. Force him like this, and now we're going to run in. Do a staff bash. The beauty of the staff bash is that it's four tick as well. So not only are we hitting him, but we're able to hit him again very soon and just keep a lot of momentum up. And then not only that, but it's also you're holding a staff which has higher defensive bonuses. So you're slightly tankier. I know it's not very significant, but any little thing adds up. And what we're doing here, it's four tick versus five tick. So we're just going to keep wailing on him like this. And just like that, we end the fight. GG, no re. That's our first W of the round. If we get two wins, three wins, if we get zero wins, one win, okay, we can't get zero, we already got a win, but it doesn't matter how many wins we get, I'm just going to show you three rounds of LMS, back to back to back to back, what I do as a fairly average player. So that was round one, we got the W, you can see that I have 30, 3082 points, how I farm points, so let's get into round two. Uh, we change our prayers around in Runelight just by changing our profiles, that way we don't have to learn muscle memory for pure versus main prayers, we just always know where the everything is, it's always in the same spot. Pray melee or pray mage, and we are going for a freeze. And now, just like in real life, we want to whip them. I guess in real life, you probably want to be the one getting whipped, but it is what it is. You can't always get what you want unless you choose or want to be a giant noob in RuneScape. Then you have everything you want, don't you? You don't really want to get whipped in robes, so I'm glad that he decided to not hit me there. That was very convenient of him. And what we're going to do now, he's super low, so we're going to DDS. Even if he gets his prayer right, we have a chance to KO him through it. You can see that he is absolutely on the ropes. Guy has no idea what's going on, so we're just going to keep whipping him, keeping the momentum going. Add some more maging. We're going to go for the uh, corner, that way he can't whip or retaliate us with a melee. He's in robes, so we're just going to go for some melee hits. Even though he's in robes, I'm going to double spec. Okay, now he's not in robes anymore. Uh, the reason for that is just robes have no defense, so you basically choose between uh, lower hits or higher accuracy. Uh, lower hits is if they have prayer on, higher accuracy if they have the robes on. Robes on. I can't speak. This guy's doing his best, but unfortunately he is just at a different stage of his PKing journey than we are. So we have a big advantage on him. Okay, he's going to hit us. Let's hit him like this. He seems to be changing his prayers randomly. I'm not doing too many mix-ups. Uh, at least I don't think I am, but uh, he's still struggling with that anyways. Yeah, it's totally fine. Again, everybody's at a different stage of their journey. And he's doing his best. He's like for taking his robes, kind of like Jad did back in 2007, except he can't hit 95 like Jad could. So the, the fear really isn't there. But uh, you never know, maybe he can DDS a 70 before he dies. What I'm doing, I'm just brewing up, and as you saw, we restored at the end. That allowed us to be able to keep the momentum going without having to waste time eating. And now we're going to brew to 115 before the next fight, and let's see what we get from the chest. Another Gmall first upgrade. So Gmall is actually not a good upgrade, simply because it's so inaccurate. Let's go up the ladder, see if there's anyone hiding. There is not. Guys, it's not too scary to go down, so we go down, and we're just going to keep looking for fights. A lot of people like to hide in this back corner for some reason, so I'm going to check here first, because if someone is here, it's basically a free immediate kill. I uh, guess not, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to check down this corner, then make my way down to the dead or hideout. Whew. 
I should mention that I'm always running around in tank gear. This is tank gear because the staff is tanky too. You don't want to have someone run up to you and just hit you with a 60 ballista or something. That would just completely ruin your day, my day, because you're losing your day. So that affects me because I'd be really sad. And then just nothing could happen. So you just always want to run, run around kind of like this in the best tank gear, mitigate as much potential damage as you can. And then once you see someone, then you can flick a uh, prey mage on. And like normal, we just choose not to get frozen. We are using this to our advantage and we are going to start whipping as much as possible. It gives a massive shift of momentum uh, because whipping is just so good. You know, who doesn't like a good whipping? This guy's not too bad at flicking his prayers, but he is a little bit questionable at flicking his robes. He's on the ropes right now. Big hit will kill him. Nope, we didn't get it. Oh, that was really bad of me. Okay, he's showing off that he's an Elder Maul. Good for you, my guy. We're just flicking all the weapons so he doesn't know what we're doing. Inventory is messed up. That's no problem. Going for the little whipper. See if he changes. He's not changing. He is very steadfast. He's going for the mage hit. Again, naturally immune to freezes just by being cool IRL. You should try it. And now we just keep the momentum up, shifting between range and mage. Okay, we're frozen next to him, which is another huge advantage for us because we know about the whip. He doesn't know about the whip. He's going to forecast his hit with the dagger. You saw that him pull out the defender like a week before he actually pulls out the dagger. So we pray against that. That is totally reactable. And all we're going to do, again, just keep momentum going up. We do not want to give him any opportunity to get back into the game. As long as we keep the momentum high, he's going to be panicking. The mental stack will be too much to handle, and he will crumble and fail. There we go. He sits down, take a bow. Good opportunity, good performance, but not good enough. Uh, we get an Aram's Robe Skirt and an Elder Maul. Decent upgrades. The big thing about this is that now we have a full matching set of Arams, which just makes you look scarier. If you come out with like a piece of Arams and Ancestral, you just don't look as scary. Once again, go to the chest, figure out what we get. We're hoping for a good item here. Staff of the Dead, great upgrade. And we're going to take the Darok's Legs. You can take the entire set. I just don't recommend taking the Helm. I really don't like the Helm for some reason. As per usual, freeze them, walk under, and then start laying down the pressure. He also knows about the whips, but he's not changing his prayer. That's something we got to look at. I'm going to see how long he goes without changing his, changing his prayer. Okay, so that was pretty quick. And I think he's going to, yep, he's going to bolt here. A lot of people are pretty predictable. Where, is he, where are you going? So now what we're going to do here is just immediate Elder Maul before he can see us. Big hit. And now with that big hit, what we're going to try and do is get the refreeze on him. So that way we can continue the momentum. We got a big hit trying to force him to eat, and that allows us just to get the refreeze. We got the re-DD, and now again, he's playing our game. We're not playing his game. It's completely our game. We did not queue up for, what is this called? Greekology. We queued up for LMS, so we are in perfect shape to steer this fight. Again, same thing's going to happen. He's unfrozen. We're going to be unfrozen in just a second, so we're going to immediately Elder Maul him for the big hit. And now we're going to go five ticks later. We go for the freeze. We always get the freeze. Just again, naturally cool. We're used to being cool. And let's just keep up the momentum. Another big maul. Ooh. It normally doesn't hit that good, but we are blessed. We were nice to Mod Ash on Twitter today. So we have the good RNG and just keep on the momentum. That's all we got to do. See what he's doing. He's going to give us another big maul. That's perfectly fine. He's whipping in robes. We're all in shambles, just like Gary Indiana, but that's fine. That is fine. Everything's fine. Everything's on fire. Now we have to choose, do we take the Ancestral Robe Bottoms? I guess so, it doesn't look as cool, but we do want to win, and winning means taking the best items. Armadillo Crossbow, huge upgrade. We get a Spec Bar, Torax Helm, not as good as the Guthans Helm, they have the exact same stats, but uh, obviously, this one is better. Why? Because it looks better, the Guthans Helm is better, because it looks better, duh. Go for the Freeze, again, try not to get frozen. He froze us, complete RNG noob. And what we're going to try and do, or what you should be doing, is making sure that you can try and one-tick your robes or your barrage. You want to be able to attack without forecasting it. If you're too slow, they know what you're doing. Like I said before, like 2007 Jad, uh, but you can't hit as high as Jad, so you're just going to be a noob. That's pretty simple. We fake you the whip, go into the bolt, going for the second one. He's on robes. He didn't expect it. He got the refreeze, but we got nothing. That was a really good fakey bolt. He's going for the claw. I let my prayer down for a second, but I got it back up in time. Almost self spited myself. Let's keep him hitting him with the whipper. We got to get uh, distance away from him because he has the uh, Armadillo crossbow. 
He's able to one tick the claws very easily and we do not want to give him an opportunity to do that because the claws are just so much expected damage. So anytime that we don't see the crossbow out, we are going to immediately change to protect from melee. Just instinctually protect from melee. This guy wants to hit me hard. Good for him. Come on. Hit me. Hit me. Don't hit me like that. Okay, we're going to eat up. He's going to claw. We go into robes after that. Hit him with the freeze. We almost had something there. Hit him with the big elder. The double. No one hits anything. Sad game. He's going to mage. We're just going to lay down some momentum with the whip. Whip equals win. Remember that. We didn't use our DDS specs yet, so I'm going to jump them right now. He's forced to pray melee, which means that we get a big bolt. Ooh, he, he didn't even fall for it. Good for you, my guy. Little fakey fake there. We're going to go right here and then back to the DDS. Big hits. Don't die to them all. We're getting chanced. We have too many sharks in inventory. I don't even know why. I totally forgot that I actually had sharks in my inventory. So that was completely preventable, and we have a massive advantage. I didn't even notice. But um, yeah, so I got to resort my inventory out. Don't let him just instantly kill me for no reason. That is a good strategy. And what we're going to do, just walk diagonally, hit him with this. The old shebang, the shaboom. We're going to walk under, hit him with the whip. Walk under, hit him with the elder. Right on robes, that's a huge hit. That's exactly what we need. Now we run away to create a gap. The reason for that is because uh, after we refreeze him, he's going to want to try and refreeze us. Or after he unfreezes, he's going to want to try and freeze us. And he's going to have freeze immunity for five ticks. So we create a gap so he can't freeze us and step under immediately. They'll have to be run to us, giving us plenty of opportunity to get him back. That makes sense. Uh, Varex plate skirt. I like it. I like it. So I'm going to take it. And uh, there we go. A crate near the dead or hideout. It's over here. I should have gone to this chest. Unfortunately, there's only two people left. So I'm going to drop this. Hold this here. Probably just drop the key unless there's no one here again. Anyone? There's dragon claws here. Ooh, that'd be a nice upgrade. Let's see what we get here. Book. I'm not going to use the book. Keep it simple. Stupid is the goal. Darks, 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 dark, 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 darks, claws. So where's this little new burino going? Private chat. No one DM'd me. Always keep private chat on whenever you're playing LMS. That way you can get the funny DMs. Okay, so the guy is over here. Hello, sir. Randy Buck. Very body name. I think you're too far away. Oh, you're not too far away. That's crazy. So he's not going to do anything. So all we're doing is just going to mix up range and, uh, range and mage. And he has to guess now. He's also in uh, the fog, so we're going to wait until right here and try and refreeze him. We didn't get it. That would have been really funny. So that would have been like a fat W. And even though you're like, that's rat behavior. So what? That's a winning behavior is what you really mean. Hit him. Get him with the freeze. I don't like him being unfrozen. And he's got a VLS. Oh, no. That is a disaster. We need him to be frozen or we are going to be in a lot of trouble. Come on, freeze him. Get under him. There we go. Now let's create some distance. The goal, just convince him to pray. Oh, no. I don't have a lot of room to work with because it's the end of the fog. We got to run around the tree, I guess. The goal is to not let him get near us. And when he unfreezes, I know that VLS is coming for me. So I want to be able to refreeze him immediately. gonna run up and bolt him a lot of people will instinctually pray melee when you run up now we get the free whipper and now we're actually just gonna walk under him and then just heal up there's no reason to give him an opportunity as i keep saying do what you need to do we're gonna run over here try and get the refreeze on him he's gonna vls us we know this so i'm gonna run over here just try and get the refreeze he's allowing me a lot of mage uh, hits and now we're just going to run in. Not a good claw, not a good claw. But just keep maging. We are pretty strong with mage. Mix it up. And now we go for that. He doesn't think we have the elder. Maul. It is what it is. Another good win. www.amithebestintheworld.com <laughs> Okay, third and final fight. Um, win or lose. I hope I don't get round ones. Then just like If I lose my first fight, I'll be really sad. Otherwise, we are going to see what happens. Designful. What a weird name. 
So again, I'm gonna go, oh, my inventory's all messed up. I'm gonna go to my sidebar, change my profile so my prayers are all in the same spot. And we always pray mage overhead because we do not want to be frozen without having the opportunity to freeze them. A lot of people will immediately just bolt and then you can see what they do. Like, this guy's just alternating his prayers. So I feel like if I mage again, yep, he's going to go range. And now I feel like I have him off. It's going to be off. We're just going to start brewing immediately. Start maging, brew down. And now we're going to run away. We don't want him running at us. You can see we knew he was going to run at us. No, I gave him the DDS. I gave him the DDS of destiny. Not good at all. Especially considering we read that so heavily or so hard. We definitely should not have given him that opportunity to do so much free damage. He's getting pretty lucky on the RNG for the freezes. He must be pretty cool IRL. Uh, someone that we should hang out with later on. A big bolt will steal the deal. We did not get a big bolt, unfortunately, but that is life. So we're just going to keep the momentum up. We are very low HP. We should not give this to him. We're just going to eat up, focus on our prayers. He's not one taking anything, so we have nothing too urgently to worry about. And now we're going to fake the potion and go in for our own DDS. Oh, the 2432. 56 years old. That is a midlife crisis if I've ever seen one. Okay, so now we got our first kill. I'm glad we didn't get round one did. This one, or this guy looks pretty good. We get an AGS out of the crate. Not the best upgrade by any means. The issue with it is that it's just like the DDS is more accurate and you get four, or just as accurate and you get four specs. I mean, anything's going to hit on peers. So why would you take two big specs instead of four big specs, you know? This guy's plan of bolting me, I don't think was working, but at the same time, he didn't get frozen, so it definitely did work. Okay, so he, he's right in praying melee, but then he immediately went to pray something else. So we're just going to hammer him down, start eating up. brew down as much as we can and do whatever we want to do he's not one taking anything but he is going to keep doing damage and that sometimes happens on peers sometimes you don't uh ooh, that's the dangers that you uh have on peers you just always take damage so you got to be prepared for everything and anything i'm all i'm a one item off my inventory Look at that little delay. The little delay. He didn't see it coming. Yeah, question mark yourself. Why didn't you see that coming, you noob? Tormented bracelet. We'll take the upgrade. GG, no re. <sighs> it's hard being this good at the game. Uh, Armadillo crossbow. Amazing upgrade. Thank you very much for that game. And it synergizes well with the new necklace of anguish that we just got. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a little melee section right here. Call that a day. Put that there. Put that there. Uh, this guy's already maging me. Thank you. I don't even know why he's not maging me with Mage Prey on, but you know, sometimes noobs be noobin. This would be a lot better if I had long range as an option, so I'm just giving him so many free hits, Jesus. If you had long range as an option, I have it turned on be off because again, I'm playing on a pier and I don't want to accidentally get defense, so I don't allow myself to have long range enabled. This guy got an immediate refreeze, I didn't even realize I was unfrozen, that is a bad mistake by me. But if you notice, we're just going to keep uh, brewing and trying to do as much mage damage as possible with the blood barrage. That way we can continuously chip down at him. Try to one-tick any barrages that we throw out. Fake you the range. And now we're going to be unfrozen. So what we want to do is get everything. A big 10-10. Another big hit. 17-18. Not too bad. This is where we need to go for the momentum. Okay, we got him frozen again. He's got us frozen. We're on the ropes. Just like a WWE superstar, The Rock, Dwayne, The Rock, Dwayne, The Rock Johnson. That's his full name. Not a lot of people know that, but yeah, true. That was a good fakey fakey. It's going to bolt. This guy does not like maging me too much. <laughs> and of course, as I say that, he decides to mage me. Another big hit. Good. And he's a little bit slow on these hits. We're able to get a lot of momentum here. Oh, the 38. Sit down, son. Ooh, good fight. Yeah, for you it was, I'm sure. We get a Mage's Book, and the reason Mage's Book is so good, a lot of Mage defense, you even see main PKers using it. But the real reason is because it's considered a primary item, or, uh, yeah, primary item in the item pool. So it pulls from the same, uh, like, slots as something like the AGS does. So basically, we got that out of the way, so now we have a better opportunity to get a better thing in the future. This guy's purple hair, he's probably going to beat me. That's just a fact of life. These little sweats with their purple hair. Mm. 
Notice I'm not paying too much attention to a lot of these fights. Sometimes that's the best thing. You just just feel feel the flow. See what happens. Um, I let a lot of free hits happen to me because you know I'm not playing against 1013. I'm not even playing against 1012. A lot of time it doesn't really matter what you do as long as you maintain consistency throughout the fight. Just do what you're supposed to be doing. You're gonna outlast them. Like mentally they will crumble, and all you have to do is not crumble before they do. Like why is this guy smiting himself? Like what are you doing? Like I have no idea what this guy's doing. He's gonna bolt me, but like, what, 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 what are you gonna do with that? Like, who's gonna bolt who? We held the bow out for a little while longer, seeing if he would change. He's not gonna change. He's a giant Uberino. Uh, the thing is, when we jump our specs, the other thing that we're getting into is now he thinks that we don't have any melee kill confirms. When in reality, of course we do. We have the AGS whack, and that will be able to provide us a lot of potential damage in the future. He's under me, so I'm going to bolt. I'm just going to keep bolting uh, with Prime Melee on. And he just walks into that. GG no re. Sorry, Purple Hair guy did not do his job today. Um, uh, not too many good upgrades. We do get a Halo, though. I'm going to drop the DDS to pick that up really quick. We're going to grab the DDS back, though. Uh, but like I was saying, the, the Mage's Book and even the Infernal Cape act as primary roll items, so we get them instead of the good items, so hopefully we can roll something good. No, we roll a Dark Bow, but on the bright side, we did get Zamrak Chaps, so now we are kind of matching with the Zami Chaps in Halo. Uh, not the best thing <laughs> that you want, but it is something. Again, we have a little, like, melee corner right here. So I can use all my specs from here. I got my range vertical, I got my mage vertical, just like this. And it's a nice, easy setup that I like, and I like to be able to do one, two, three, one, two, three. Just figure out what works for you, and you will do fine. <clears throat> The main thing that I think a lot of people need to take away from this is it doesn't matter how good you are at the game as long as you are lucky. If you're not lucky, I don't know why you're even bothering watching this. That's like half the game. If you haven't noticed, I never get frozen and just pulled an AGS. The Dragon Knives over here are like the best item in the game for pures. Like I would rather this over a VLS any day. So I'm going to grab these real quick. Slap them right there. Another crate right next to me. Blessed by Jagex Ash. Thank you very much. And what do we get? A Void Waker. Oh my gosh. The game is handing it to me. So now that we have a really strong item set, what I'm going to do is actually jump and dump the Tormented Bracelet. I don't think I need to waste another uh, inventory slot right now. I don't want any issues. And we're just going to focus on what we can do. I'm even going to... No, I have the knives, so I want to keep the anguish. But I'm just going to try and minimize it. Keep it simple, stupid. This guy definitely looks kind of body. I don't know why. Level 80, that screams bot to me. But we're going to take the crate. Azurials, thank you. Thank you, game. And all we gotta do now, just wait 15 seconds. He is all of a sudden done. So we're gonna get right up next to him and we are just gonna force him to do a 50-50 mix up right here. Is he gonna pray melee? He's gonna pray mage. Hit him with the big bolt. Keep the momentum with mage. Another big bolt. Start whacking him down. Void Waker's just so strong. It's, it's literally just a stronger DCM on Pures. Every time he's going to eat, or uh, I think he's going to pod trick. So whenever he does that, I'm just going to pray melee. Don't give him an opportunity. You know, as I always say, do not give him an opportunity to get back into the game. I'm even going to brew up right now. We're going to cast a quick uh, spell. One more spell once we get back into it. He's got Morgan Javelin, so the plan is just to stay more than four tiles, or more than five tiles away from him. We didn't hit any damage, but we did get a freeze on him. Interesting. Gonna pop back up and again triple eat all the way to safety. I didn't even triple eat there. I'm just lying to you guys. There, it doesn't even matter. I'm not hitting him on prayer because all he's doing is nothing to me. I had such an advantage. GG no re. That's three games. That's all you have to do in LMS. Just win the game and you are set. So now that that's out of the way, let me know if you guys ever want another LMS commentary. Maybe I can actually do it with some like I don't know better players maybe i lost i'm not trying to be mean I, I definitely got lucky a lot of the times i definitely abuse my luck that's why my name is literally no that's not my name what if i change to this fancy now what if i change to this freeze rng <laughs> that's a little of my account name yeah so i just i have a lot of uh, rsn changer things uh, anyways, that's the end of the commentary. If you guys need anything else, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want to see more of these, let me know. Uh, if you want to see something else, let me know. If you don't think I'm good, let me know. I don't know. Just do a comment for the algorithm. Bye.